Hello, Mr. Barton here, and welcome to another edition of the TES Secondary Math Resource of the Week. Now, it's, you've got to forgive me here, it's been quite a few weeks before I featured a probability resource. Um, you know I flipping love probability, it's my favourite topic in math, but I tell you, you've got to give me this one because this is wonderful. I don't know if you find this, but students often find probability quite an abstract topic. It's quite hard for them to cling on to something they understand. And that leads to loads of mistakes, because if students don't know what a probability of 0.4 or 3 eighths actually means, if they can't visualise it and cling on to it, then how can they judge whether their answers make sense? How can they know whether probability should go up or down and so on? So any resource that makes it more real to students, I'm a big fan of. But crucially by that, I don't mean this kind of clunky way we often try and force the real world into into mathematics because i don't think that's helpful and i don't think this resource does it what we're looking at here is games fairground games contrived fairground games and i say that to the students but it's just wonderful because the range of probability skills they cover is ideal for GCSE. It's also ideal for maybe a year nine or year 10 class that's got to grips with uh, tree diagrams and sample space diagrams and so on. So it's been uploaded by uh, Fosh, Fosh Jish I'm going for there. Um, and it consists of two files. One's a PowerPoint, one's a PDF. They're both of the same thing. So I'm going to have a look at the PowerPoint. So here it is here. Mr. Fish's Fairground. So there are eight games to attempt. Um, after spending all your money, you're down to your last quid. So you've got one quid to burn. Which one, which of these games are you going to play to give you your best chance of winning? So there's the hook. I'm talking of hooks. Here's hook a duck. So here's one of the games. Um, and I'll just show you the games and I'll talk through um, how I might use it in a class. So we've got this one, hook in a duck. There you win if both numbers on the bottom of them are odd. Um, so you're going to pay a quid for that one. A tower topple. Uh, you win if you topple at least two towers. That's a particularly nice one, that one. FaceTime. You win if you get three picture cards. Uh, busy Bees. You win if you get three different color beads. And like, can we see already the variety of these? Spinning sixes, you win if your total, two totals come to six. Rock and roll, if your uh, dice is a multiple of eight, loads of different skills coming into play. So, skeezy peasy, throwing three balls at the target, you win if you get a hundred or more or so on. Um, and I think the last one, flip flop, yeah, it is the last one. Flip five coins, you win if your coins alternate between heads and tails. Now, look at the skills involved to do this. I mean, flip, take flip-flop. How are you going to do that? Is a tree diagram going to work? Is sample space diagram going to work? Or are we going to need to use something like systematic listing strategies, new spec GCSE? This one here, how are students going to arrange this information? How are they going to decide if they're throwing three balls? Which ones are going to give them 100 or more? How are they going to collect all that information? You get the classic dice one, but instead of adding dice, we're multiplying and we're linking it into multiples of eight. So that's probably a sample space diagram. Spinning sixes, is that a tree diagram? Possibly, is it sample space? Possibly. Three beads from a bag. You don't often get, get things like this taking three things out. So how are students going to deal with it? Perfect, great range of things covered. Some dependent events, some independent events, and so on. So how would you use this? Now, there's a couple of ways. Option one is you just give all these out to your kids and it's a lesson or two lessons work, working the way through them. Option two, which I probably favour, because you don't want kids getting bogged down too long on any particular one, is do as a bit of a carousel activity. Maybe five minutes, maybe 10 minutes analysing each one and then move move on. So you've got eight ones to uh, eight ones to do here, eight different active eight different tables laid out. Say you've got 32 kids in your class, if my maths is right, that's four kids per table. Uh, five minutes on the clock or 10 minutes on the clock, brrr, whistle goes, kids move on to the next one. They've got to write up their analysis. It stops kids getting bogged down and anything too long. And I tell you what, if you're thinking flipping it, that's good that I've not even started yet because look at this here, bit of extension work there. Things get reduced 50p, 25p, 10p. Does that change anything now? Um, the score required has been changed to 85. Little things like that. Brilliant. And then look at that. Create your own game or challenge. Now, I've got a couple of, well, one little twist to suggest here. Create your own game or challenge is fantastic um, and work out the probability of winning it. What about flip that on its head? Can you create a game that's got a probability of winning it of 0.7 or 0.85 or something like that? So given a probability, can you create a game? I think that'd be nice. And the best of all, 
he's only gone and provided the answers as well. What a wonderful resource. So this is up there now, and this is an illustrious list to get into. It was one of my all-time favourite probability resources. I hope you enjoy it too. Uh, one thing I will say um, is I wouldn't try and teach probability through this. This is a means of assessing or extending knowledge of probability, not teaching probability. Because this, a lot of information going on here um, with cognitive overload and all that kind of stuff. So you, you want to make sure that the, the basics of probability are secure in your kid's mind. Then this is all about applying it and stretching them and so on. So just a tiny little word of warning. So you don't want to put them off what everybody knows is the best topic in mathematics. Anyway, hope that was useful. I'll see you for a fresh results of the week next week. Take care. Bye for now.